lived in Phoenix in the 1970s or 80s, you probably have a story to tell about visiting Arizona's tallest building, the 40-story glass tower that reaches for the sky over downtown Phoenix. That 50-year-old headquarters for several banks was last known as Chase Tower. Well, now the landmark sits empty, surrounded by fences. Team 12's Bram Resnick takes us back in time to the glamorous restaurant that sat at the top of the tower and a glimpse of what's to come in a story you'll only see here on 12 News. So many memories are still alive in that building. Maybe it was a prom date or a wedding reception or gawking at a stunning sunset with absolutely nothing blocking your view. Gary Spadafore saw it all and much more. i wait for this light to come off. Gary Spadafore is one of countless desert transplants. To say I was starving, literally. It was drinking that saved him. Spadafore moved from Detroit to Phoenix for a teaching job, but the pace stank, so he learned to tend bar. I had a little crummy apartment, a $200 motorcycle, uh, so I had to get a job at night, and most jobs at night included alcohol. It was the early 70s, and he was starting at the top, bartending at the Golden Eagle restaurant at the pinnacle of the new 40 story Valley Center. Oh my gosh. Uh, especially when the sun was going down, even if they had a, a reservation, they would walk right to the window and, and stand and, and just ooh and ah. 50 years ago, what was then Valley National Bank welcomed customers to its new home, a symbol of its success and ambition in the fast-growing sun country. Not bad for a bank whose roots were in a Polish immigrant's general store in Solomonville, in the Arizona Territory of the 1890s. People felt that Phoenix was, was really arriving uh, on the national scene. The French restaurant on the top floor was several cuts above anything else in town. Tuxedos, maitre d's, captains, waiters, all waiters, of course, mostly European. They all had accents, <laughs> heavy, heavy accents. Each diner got a matchbook engraved with their name. Phoenix's most expensive restaurant also had two menus, one for men with the prices and one for women without. It just seemed like the ladies shouldn't be bothered with having to look at prices. The excitement surrounding the state's tallest building heralded the coming revival of a dying downtown. I remember feeling so unbelievably special. Christine Mackey's bosses took her to lunch at the Golden Eagle. The Valley Center was the first high-rise she'd ever seen. Nobody lived in downtown. There weren't the restaurants. There was a jack-in-the-box where City Hall is today. Today, as Phoenix's economic development director, Mackey has a front-row seat to the downtown boom. She's closely watching the fate of this landmark, the former Chase Tower. It was old bank space, and so they're um, demolishing each floor and, and opening it wide up. The Chase Bank name, just a shadow on an empty shell surrounded by fences in the heart of downtown. The Golden Eagle restaurant became a private club that closed its doors over a decade ago. And Gary Spadafore never went back to teaching. Were you making good money better than a teacher? I was making great money. And each year I would say, next year I'll get serious and get a teaching job. It was also the 70s. Where we would invite people up, our friends lock the elevators off and we would have parties up there on our own. And Gary and his friends enjoyed some after hours fun. I could get fired for that, but I think 50 years later, I'm okay. Gary Spadafore's bartending gig at the Golden Eagle led to a 40 year career in the wine and liquor business. The future of the downtown tower that launched Gary's career is still up in the air. But a familiar Valley name, Jerry Colangelo, will play a role. His development team is figuring out how to breathe new life into an Arizona landmark that once took our breath away. In Phoenix, Bram Resnick, 12 News.